My name is Didama Del Mar and you're watching my search for me. I have another very inspiring interview for you ready to be shared. Last summer I went to London and I interviewed a couple of very interesting special people and one of them was Mandeep Rai, a very special, beautiful power lady that works for an organization called Creative Visions Global. Creative Visions Global, uh, Mandeep will be talking about this in the interview, but it's an organization that provides resources, tools to use the power of media and arts to build social movements that impact a better world. How beautiful is that? Well, Mandeep herself, she's a, quite a smart lady and she tells us about her own journey, how she ended up working for this organization, everything that she does, and she gives her tips and advices when it comes to finding yourself and to really following your own heart. So please enjoy this interview, leave your comments and share it if you think it's useful for any other people. Go to the fan page on Facebook, My Search For Me, or subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, enjoy. Mandy, so nice to have you here. Thank you for taking the time. I know you had a hectic day today, but you still made it. Um, so, um, yeah, before we start, of course, the audience doesn't really know much about you, and I have to find out a lot of things about you. So, let's just start with a general question Who are you, and what do you do? Okay. My name is Mandy Kaur Rydelen, and I'm a human being. Um, I'm a piece of stardust in this universe, like we all are. Mm -hmm. um, and I've just come from a retreat, which is why I'm answering the question in this way. You, okay. know, you, always, you always have to contextualize it with where you're at. So yeah. where I'm at right now is that we're tiny, 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 we're 0.01% of the whole universe, mm -hmm. and 99.9% .9 we don't even know about. Yeah. So, as in, what we know about the Milky Way is 0.01%. Yeah. So we are just, you know, stardust, just yeah. a piece of dust. So yeah. okay. that's who I am. <laughs> that's a very deep question. <laughs> Beautiful to describe, but I can also imagine people would like to know yes. and what does that mean to your life? What, what do you do? Okay, so um, currently what I'm doing is setting up Creative Visions Global yeah. here in the UK. Um, Creative Visions is an organisation that's been running for nearly two decades, so okay. 17 to 18 years. Wow. And um, it's based in LA. And 18 years ago, I that was kind of my second job after private banking and, really? in, and my introduction to media. Wow. And essentially, what we do is help people who are help people who are using media or the arts uh, for the power of good. Okay. and amplify their work. Yeah. Um, so by media and the arts I mean anything from film, TV, radio, drama, music, yeah. everything within media and the arts. Yeah. And by good I mean anything that's making a real positive change to society and it's not just about then kind of amplifying it through the media but it's about having a real call to action and creating sustainable change. Okay. So it's Beautiful. a cross between media and uh, a social enterprise um, in the sense that it m creates change. Yeah, beautiful. Can you give a, a couple of examples of the type of projects you guys work on because it's still a little bit broad? Sure, sure. So one example that I have witnessed over these years flourishing, yeah. um, we work with creative activists. So one girl came to us, her name is Jessica Mabry. And she said, I really want to uh, teach young children how to use a video recorder in India. So she's okay. American, brawn, bred, etc., etc., and wanted to go and do this in India. So we really thought it was like a six month or a year long project, and off she goes. Mm -hmm. Now, several years, like maybe 10 years or however many years later, she's still there with her, got married there, has children there, etc. And what she's seen is that in teaching children how to use a video recorder, 
lots of impact has made, been made into the villages, really? uh, such that domestic violence has actually reduced. Wow. Because you can imagine if there's potentially, if your child has that kind of potential, you're going to think twice before, before raising your hand. So that's an example. Wow. And there are many, many, many other projects like that. We actually have over 250 projects. So it's just a person or a group of people who think, I really want to do this. So. Um, I was in LA last week and a young woman came in and she said, I've seen that acid attacks, actually, this is another example in India, acid attacks are on the increase. Wow. I really want to use um, photojournalism to make a difference there. So that would be the type of thing we would wow, work with. And uh, how did you get involved in this organization? I mean, it's existed over 17 years. Yes. I assume you weren't there from the beginning? Or? I actually was. Really? Yes. Wow, uh, so it's been a long journey. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Um, I got involved, so I was working for JP Morgan in private banking, and JP Morgan merged with Chase Manhattan. And during that merger, I took a small sabbatical, three months I asked for. Okay. And I. My dream was to, so I speak Spanish, um, I, my dream was to use Spanish in Central America and just travel across Central America and nice. some university friends were going, so I joined them. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, as the Spanish got better, I just wanted to be Cuban in Cuba, in the sense that I'm not Cuban, but I wanted to pass as Cuban, so that I didn't have to just stay in the fancy hotels and pay in yeah. dollars and never get to talk to a Cuban, but so that I could slip into society and be one of them and see what Cuba is really like. Yeah. So that was the aim. But okay. I had um, scruffy Puma type trainers on and a Nike jacket and had picked up lots from Central America that I wanted to get rid of so that once I got to the airport I could just have a small bag and slip into the crowd. Yeah. And actually I was meeting a friend who was a university professor and he was going to pick me up and pretend that I was his daughter and we were going to Okay, so you had it all set, set out. Yeah, it all yeah. set out. <laughs> so all I had to do was get my all my stuff into this big hammock case that I had bought and have someone take it from me in Cancun airport and take it to LA. Yeah. Um, this is pre kind of WhatsApp, social media, blah blah blah. This is two year two thousand. Mm -hmm. Pre nine eleven also. Yeah. Um year two thousand is it year two thousand? Yeah, year 2000 or 2001, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so I have no idea who's going to do this. So I just wait in the airport hoping that I could persuade someone. So I spend the night at the airport waiting for the 6 a.m. LA bound flight. Wow. Um, and slowly the, the, you know, the line starts to form. And there's a lady in this line who has bright orange hair and a green silk suit. And she really stood out. She was quite tall. Um, she had a pilot standing next to her, but I didn't notice him because he was a little shorter and so I went straight to her and said, oh, you know, would you mind putting my bag on the conveyor belt and uh, on the other end, just leave it and mm -hmm. they'll just put it in large property because no one will collect it. Okay. Um, and she said, well, uh, no, the pilot next to her said, well, there could be drugs in this, Kathy, don't trust this. Yes. Yeah. Um, and Kathy said, well, if the airport staff say it's okay, and the airport staff knew because I'd spent the whole night there waiting for this. Wow. And, you know, there weren't the security risks that there are now. Or we hadn't, I almost think we created, uh, the way we dealt with, let's say, terrorism post 9-11 and with all the attacks of late, is just to be reactionary and increase security in airports to yeah. the nth degree. Yeah. But none of that existed and there was no need. So uh, the airport staff said, you know, yes, we know, she just wants this bag and was property to go ahead. So she the lady, no, I put the bag on and off it goes. Okay. And this lady, Kathy, doesn't take it to us property, but she send, doesn't leave it. She sends me an email and says, there were sniffer dogs all over your bags. And, you know, I'm I'm writing to you from NYPD Blue, blah, 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 like wow. scroll down, scroll down, hit, hit, hit. you know, I'm just like horrified as I'm reading her email. And then she says at the bottom, only joking, I didn't leave your bag in much property because okay. I want you to come in. Visit me when you come to LA, you have to come to this address, my home, really? in order to retrieve your bag. So I said, fine, okay, so I go to LA, go to her home. And she said, what are you doing? Because you had the same chutzpah that my son had. And he, okay. his name is Dan Eldon. Um, and he was a photojournalist. I was at the time 22 or 21. He was also 22 when he was covering um, important social issues such that he had gone to cover a, 
a bombing in Somalia okay. and the crowd became really angry and he was stoned to death. Wow. Uh, so she had like lost her son for being that, for being a creative activist who wanted to make a positive yeah. difference. Yeah. So she said, you know, what are you doing? Why don't you consider working with me? Um, and so that's how it started. So I worked wow. with her and then that led to like a, a career in media and and today I see that um, as well as LA, they've created a branch in New York and in um, Atlanta and they just made a film about his life, only just after 22 years. About the son. About his okay. son. We filmed it in South Africa and it will be coming out in, um, on the, in the Toronto Film Festival okay. later this year in September. And so it just seemed a time when we felt that Creative Vision should go global and we should, you know, help more people yeah. do what they really want to do. Yeah. Um, and so hence the London kind of expansion. Yeah. And so I've been on their board ever since all that time and although wow. I've been doing other things, I just think this is when they need a little yeah. a, a helping hand and so yeah. that's what I'm doing. Beautiful story in such a <laughs> such a funny way how life led you into a different direction than you were probably expecting. Yeah, I didn't know I'd never studied journalism, no. the media was not something I barely watch TV, frankly. I did never, I ne would never have done, no. I've never have gone down that path, had that interaction of her. Not had a wow. Very remarkable. And Katie was the lady who had founded that. Kathy, yeah. yeah. Oh, Kathy, uh, yeah. The company. Kathy Elden. Okay. Yeah. Her and her daughter, Amy, okay. uh, after the death of their the son, son yeah. brother, um, just didn't want that death to be a needless death and wanted to do something positive from it. And yeah. So they founded it. Okay, beautiful. And what's your exact role within the company? Um, so I would just say kind of director of Creative Visions Global. So the, the company is called Creative Visions yeah. and the global arm now, this, is what I'm leading. Okay. Um, so whatever you'd like to call me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And how big is the group of people now involved? I mean, it has grown probably yes. over the years. Yeah. Um, so maybe about it's always a changing number 20 maybe 15 to 20 people that are always based in LA yeah a few people in Atlanta a few people in New York um, and in terms of the projects you know in terms of kind of the network it's a massive network and I'd, I'd say yeah um, we've traced where the projects have gone and how many people they've touched and a hundred million people have been touched by the work that's been done. And that's not us, that's all these creative activists yeah. that are doing. True them. Yeah. It has expanded us further. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so you've been involved with the company from the beginning mm -hmm. almost. Mm -hmm. um, so you've seen and grown and grown and a lot of nice projects probably along the way. And challenges and difficulties and all kinds of things. I mean, yeah. that is really something I've witnessed whilst doing other things, but I've definitely witnessed it. Yes. Yeah. So can you give a couple of examples of those challenges along the way like while Creative you... Visions? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, Creative Visions is a is a uh, it recently was described to me as a family business because it is uh, mother and uh, daughter. Yeah. Um, but more importantly, it's a social enterprise and a charity, and I guess it wears many hats. Yeah. And this is, so if you're an individual who's coming to Creative Visions, you can be a creative activist who wants your work to be amplified. And yeah. we could do that in many ways in net con connecting you and networking you out and making sure, you know, it, just like what they did to me, I would not have done what, I, what I've gone on to do mm. had they not kind of opened all these doors for me. Mm. So in one way, it's a network, but it also, if you have 70% of their projects have been documentaries, so they have a production arm also. Okay. Um, they also have a, a publications arm. They also have, so one of the challenges is that they really are so organic and so able to be malleable according to your specific needs. Yeah. That sometimes it's difficult to describe it, mm -hmm. um, and therefore uh, that has presented challenges. What box does it fit in? What about? 
you know, what do we say to such and such person who would like to invest in it or would like to contribute to it? Or yeah. So it's just one of those that that would be an example of a challenge. And yeah, um, yeah. I, I guess as any organisation, when you're or even as an individual, when you're going from a vision to a reality, mm -hmm. there are also lots of things that have to change as you. as you become from being organic to being organized and disciplined and an organization mm -hmm. with many people and their mm -hmm. processes and structures and yeah. so growing yeah and whether you're whether you're an individual or whether you're an organization yeah i think that's a challenge that everyone kind of including us goes through yeah or any entrepreneur goes through that yeah, or any, yeah. yeah that's normal but yeah. also in general in life you always have those moments yeah and you have kind of critical who am i where am i going what do i have to become now mm -hmm. you know we're always having to pivot yeah 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 no oh, beautiful and uh, looking back at your career um what would you say were some of the things that you could have done differently or okay. better, or if like looking back, if you could give some advice to your younger self, would there be some things that you would say, well, start with this or do this? Okay, okay. <laughs> so I wouldn't say my career has been normal in the sense that, so I went from work, you know, private banking to working with Cathy at Creative Visions, yeah. to then working with the BBC World Service for nearly 10 years as a foreign correspondent and radio. Okay. Then worked with Reuters on the television side in New York covering the UN and NASDAQ, so political and financial news. Yeah. Then went on to uh, work for the Sheikhs in Abu Dhabi to create a venture capital fund okay. to invest in different forms of media in the Middle East so that they're not just consuming Hollywood or Bollywood, that they're creating their own media. Okay. To then doing um, an MBA and working with the government here to create an entrepreneurship fund, which is something that Britain is not really known for, but increasingly wants to be and is. Um, so an entrepreneurship fund called UK Startup Loans. To then um, working a lot with uh, basically, um, I guess, creating my own projects and brand and working with different conferences and um, speaker series etc etc yeah. to a personal project that I'm now doing which I'm not going to mention for the moment but essentially mm -hmm. all of that has meant that although you can see they seem to be logical steps I guess similar to creative visions <laughs> similar to anyone else it's different I'm not just a banker yeah. or a journalist or yeah, it's in a one box. Yeah. Yeah. So that presents, you know, its own challenges. Yeah. Um, what I would say to my younger self, or what advice I would give, I guess not to be scared of that, not to be scared of not fitting into a box, yeah. to um, develop and grow without fear of... You're always scared, we're always thinking about how things are perceived, and perceptions are important, don't yeah. get me wrong, I'm not... I'm not pretending that they that it doesn't matter. It mm -hmm. does, but not to allow that to limit you, um, because if you always think about what people are thinking or what they're perceiving, then you're living into their reality rather than creating your own reality. Yeah. Um, and once you've done whatever you are to do, you can always ask for forgiveness if you need to, or mm -hmm. explain. Yeah. Um, why you've done so yeah. 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 So don't sit around waiting for permission. No one's going to give it to you. No. Go ahead and do what you need to do, and then explain it or ask. Okay. Beautiful interview, right? With this special lady, Mandy. I thought it was quite remarkable what she told us about her story, how she ended up working for this organization, Creative Visions Global. She knows she was in Cuba, she had completely different plans and life guided her in a completely different direction. Well, in general, I think that's a great lesson because we're all busy, most of us are busy with making plans, thinking about the future, the things that we want to achieve. But sometimes it's just good to listen and be guided by life and, you know, the things that happen to you because that might be a much better and bigger plan for yourself. 
So, in the second part, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the organization that she works for. And also, she will be, we will be talking about motherhood, how that changes your vision in life. But also a little bit more about her personal the achievements that she's proud of, the role models in her life, and much more. So please do leave your comments below this video, share this video or go to our Facebook fan page, My Search For Me. And I'll see you again during the second part. Bye for now.